Oh, Holly, Holly, I'm sorry to bust in on you like this, but the door was open, so I just let myself in. I've been trying to reach you. Your phone is messed up or something. It's disconnected. It's just a mistake. They'll be restoring it tomorrow. Okay, well, I was in the neighborhood, as the saying goes. Can I sit down? Sure. I'm sorry. It's just such a surprise. Can I get you some coffee or something? No, no, I can't stay. I have a concert. Oh, of course. But how are things with the film? Same old shit. I'm going to strike or not going to strike, you know. We're very heavy on the Wagner overtures this year. That goes down really well with the Long Island set. So what else is there? Well, at least the brass section's happy. <laughs> Yes, this year. Pretty good. Schulte is doing two programs. Oh, so I'm in heaven. I'll bet. Kubiak still hasn't cleaned his tux. I can't believe I've been staring at that split pea soup stain for the last eight months. I mean, it's come to mean so many things to me. A caterpillar, a map of the Well, if you ever does clean up, what will you do during the rest? So you'll miss it. <laughs> I miss you. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I've been meaning to call or stop by the studio. It's without a caution. I know, I know. Not even a call. I know. Uh, God, Maria. I don't know what to say. There are so many things. Well, first off, I owe you a fortune. You know that I would coach you even if you couldn't pay me one red cent. Thank you. That's very generous of you, but I couldn't do that. Why not? I just... Couldn't. Anyway, it's well, it's not just the money. Here's the thing, Janice. I'm not really that wild about teaching, to be honest with you. Oh, all right, it has its moments. But for the most part, it's just a replay of those early torture days. I mean, getting beyond technique is not easy. It's a miserable grind, and you know it. I only have three <laughs> students now. There's a lot of soul draining involved in getting a player to make the necessary sacrifices. And uh, quite honestly, on some days, I'd really rather have my gum scraped than have to grind <laughs> out the necessary inspiration. So why do I do it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't need the money. I don't need an outlet for my musical impulses, God knows. But I do know what it's like to feel the awful loneliness of the practice room. And I feel compassion for that. Now, Jonas, what is going on with you? Did Hodge call you? Yes, ma'am. You knew he would. I guess. I brought the contracts. He asked me. No, I told Hodge last week that I couldn't give him a decision right away. But we're talking about a year in Cambridge, Marie. But I'm waiting till Mason stops or says he's in the clear to decide. You promised to call last Monday. Harvard is pressing him to get in the contracts. He says he'll get him in at the end of the week. I mean, he, he can't hold him off any longer. How is Mason? Not great. He's in Roosevelt now. Uh, he had a bad bout last week. I'm sorry. Look, you know you're not the only one who is affected by this decision. This is a crucial move for the quartet. I mean, a residency at Harvard may not be the be-all and end-all, but more than likely, it could mean that the quartet could get off the cocktail party circuit for good. Don't you think I know how important it is? To be honest with you, Jonas, I don't know what's going on in that brain of yours. You're fucking around with your own very precious and hard-won life in music and the lives of three other very gifted and devoted musicians. Look, Marie, if I can't go, Evan Schultz knows our rep very well, he is loved, and no one has suffered for it. Quit kidding me, Jonas. A quartet is not something you screw around with. The pieces are not interchangeable. You've been working for eight years to develop a very specific, irreplaceable chemistry. That's what got you the fellowship. Evan Schultz is a very fine player. 
Why well, has it got your history? You realize, of course, that if you don't go, that's it for you in the quartet? I figured as much. Then you may not survive it. Have you considered that? Yes. Oh. So what's it going to be, Judas? Such. Jerking everybody around. Sign the contract. Hodge is calling me tonight. He has to know. Come on, Judas. I haven't got all afternoon. In that case, I'm going to have to say no. I have to. Look, I have to. Mason is just too fragile right now. So, now, I ask the dreaded question. Why? Why this incredible sacrifice? I don't think of it that way. I know that. But you have spent over 20 years in preparation for a life in music. And now you're on the brink of maybe, just possibly, if you play your cards right, doing something of some significance. Two years ago, a man walks into your life. Suddenly you're skipping coachings, running late to rehearsals, and now you're making a decision that may ruin you irreversibly. And all because of a germ. Junis, just because a man is diseased does not make him worthy of this sacrifice. You're being cruel. No, you are the cruel one, Junis. How will it pay for yourself? Oh, it won't be easy for me to lose you. You came to me late. Your early training was a joke. And at first I didn't hold out that much hope for you. But then I saw that in spite of all your limitations, you had that thing that cancels out everything else. You cleave to the music. You cleave to it the way we're supposed to cleave to our spouses, but never do. And now it's all dropping away, just dropping away so easily. Junis, when this thing is over, and it will be over, you know that. Of course. So two years, three years, that's a lot of time to lose for an almost middle-aged musician who hasn't made the big time. Do you really think you'll be able to reclaim that lost time? I'm aware of the risk that I'm taking. 